All right, so it's finally time for me to put my engine together. So as you can see, I have everything prepped. I sprayed some brake clean on the mating surfaces and I wiped them off, made sure they're all nice and clean. I wiped out without gloves on with my fingers on the uh, crank journals and made sure that there was no metal shavings or anything like that. So what I did is I printed out the manual. I organized it in uh, numerical or, or uh, in ascending order from the start of the assembly process to the end. So what I did is I'm just going to go through each line and then I'm going to cross out as I do each part. So the first page, which is in the end of the manual, really, it's kind of like almost the last pages. But I, I could link the fully organized manual in the uh, description, so that way it's easy to find. So what I did is I just checked to verify that all these plugs are on here. So there's one there. There's one that would be right here, but I took it out because that's where the oil feed line for the turbo is going to be. And then there's one right here, as you can see in the picture. Also, this picture will help you identify which block half is bank one and which one is bank two. So you can see A right here which is this block half right here. So you can see that port, you can see right there, and then see all the other lining holes. And that's how you can make your uh, assumption of which one's which. And you can see that's titled as bank one. So this is bank one, the one that doesn't have the, um, the crank position sensor, which I believe is the driver's side, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the back of the block. This is the front of the block. So the front is where the timing chain cover goes and the back is where the clutch and flywheel and all that stuff goes. And then that's where your crank will sit. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna prep everything. I'm gonna put the sealant down and then put the bearings in and then drop the crank in. Before I drop the crank in, I'm gonna clean it off with some WD-40 to get the factory grease and stuff off it. I'm going to drop the bearings in. When I do that, I'm going to put assembly lube on only the front side of the bearings, the side that is receiving anything on it. And then I'm going to just wipe it in, you know, just to make sure it spreads. I'll do the same on this side, put the sealant where it needs to go. And then I'm going to put the case halves together with the crank in between. All right, so I just put the bearings in. So I did that following the manual here. I also labeled my banks too, so I labeled this one B1 and B2, so that way I don't get confused. I'm probably gonna label it A and B, just so that way it helps me even more, because when they reference it in here, it says A and B right there, and then down here it says B. So it goes um, with the crank bearings, like the main crank bearing or whatever they call it. And then uh, it goes the smooth one, and then the one with the holes in it, or the lines in it, and then the smooth one, then the lines again. I also put this seal in the back here, this um, O-ring. And then, I don't know if you're supposed to oil it. It doesn't say to oil the O-ring or anything, so I'm not going to. And then after that, I'm going to uh, put some assembly lube on it. Ooh, a little bit. It probably has a seal in it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it was worth a try. And then after that, I'm gonna wipe down the crank. My machine shop suggested that I use the straw attachment on the brake clean to spray out the oil um, to spray out the oil supply holes and all that so that way if there is any kind of shavings from the factory or whatever it'll all be good uh, i was able to bypass some steps like these steps with all the plates and stuff because i never took them off but i still did check them to make sure that they were on there and to make sure that they had sealant and stuff on them. So I'd recommend going through every step as if you're putting it together. Even if you don't put it together, some of the stuff, I would still at least double check to make sure that the stuff is there. But yeah, after that, I'm gonna grease up these uh, bearings on the inside. I wiped the backs of them off with my shirt. That's what uh, my machine shop recommended I do because there's still a little bit of oil and stuff. And um, I checked it and make sure there's no lint or anything. And then uh, you gotta be careful when you're putting them in because you don't wanna force them or anything. And then there's little clips on the ends. You wanna make sure that they go in the clip side. And I don't know why these ones don't have any clips. Like neither side of them have a clip, which is really confusing to me. So I, I don't know what keeps them from spinning. Who knows? I mean, there's the groove that they go in here too. So I don't know. I'm very baffled. 
All right, so I put the crank in, I put some assembly lube on it. I put some assembly lube on the piston journals too, just so that way I don't have to worry about it as much later, because I'm gonna put it on the piston um, rod bearings too. But uh, in the illustration here, you can see it says to put the crankshaft in bank two, which you can see the little gasket there too, up at the top right corner, right? <laughs> it's hard to do because I only have so many hands. But right there, you can see the little gasket. And then if you uh, look at the different pieces and setup and everything, you can see how it is. But at the bottom here, so the bottom here is showing bank one. And uh, don't get confused by this, because it says B, A, B, C, and all that stuff. That is just referring to this little diagram down here saying how to do it. So you're gonna put sealant along the top. So along the top here, and then around the holes on each one <clears throat> and then it's going to curve around the front so you can see oh, it's hard to get this to focus so it's going to curve around the front here it looks like i don't know if it goes in the groove but i mean i'm i guess when i smash the things together <laughs> it'll go in the groove and then it looks like you put some around here as well and then you put like a strip around here too so around this hole as well so I'm gonna try and do that. And then I'm gonna try and put these two together. I won't be able to show me putting it together just because I don't have enough hands. But yeah, I think it'll be fine. Another side note too, make sure, <laughs> make sure the whole crank rotates as well. It shouldn't be that hard to rotate, but I mean, you can see it spins pretty freely. You don't hear any noise. So listen to hear if you, anything, if you hear anything that sounds abnormal like scraping or bending or anything like that. All right, I just slapped down the sealant. So on here, it says to add a little bit thicker here, a little bit thicker here, and I believe it says a little bit thicker here. Um, these might be a little too much, but I mean, I guess we'll find out when I put it together, I guess. <laughs> this spot's a little sketchy because it's right there next to the bearing. So I might, I think I'm going to try and, well, I'm going to just send it. Fuck it. All right, I got a pieces together. I had some seepage. I'm gonna just see if I can check in there to see the bolt holes maybe, and see if I have some seepage anywhere else. Uh, my biggest concern is having seepage on the journal bearings or the journals in general. Uh, everything looks good so far. And I smacked it with the mallet, you know, to seat it down. And I believe everything is where it's supposed to be. It's very interesting. I hope I hope I did everything right. I'm gonna look back at the video to make sure my sealant's in the right spot because I was running out of time just because it says to not wait any longer than five minutes and it was a little bit of time. But I think it's fine. I just need to check everything out and make sure everything's good and then I could start putting the bolts in. So now I'm done with this step, which is this, the sealant step. The next step is uh, where it says don't let it overflow into the oil bearing passages or anything. Um, so next is going to be putting the bolts in and all that. And then torquing them, loosening them, torquing them, loosening them, and just going back and forth like a hundred times because that's how fun these engines are. <laughs> so another important step while you're doing this too, before you start doing your pattern and all that, it says to apply oil to the washers and the mounting bolt threads. This is to prevent the threads from catching when they're not supposed to from friction and it'll uh, give you a slightly wrong torque reading if it's catching when it's not supposed to as opposed to sliding smoothly in the threads. So you can see your, your threads or your uh, mounting holes and then the manual tells you which direction to do them in. And then also another thing that's important why you need to know what cylinder or what bank you're working with is because in here it specifically says to hold it by a specific bank. It doesn't say mount it, don't put it on an engine hoist just yet, or an engine stand just yet. You hold it by the specific bank that it tells you to when you're tightening these. So in here it says, when tightening the mounting bolts, hold the cylinder block bank two side while not holding the cylinder block bank one side. So as you can see, bank two, right, is our crank sensor side crank position sensor side. So when we're tightening these bolts, we're gonna be holding it back here instead of here. And that's important so that way you don't have, um, you don't have it, um, if you're holding here, it won't 
pull the back as much, I guess, is why they're doing that. As opposed to here, it's pulling the forward. It's pulling, it's pulling the whole block with the bolt head with it. Instead of if you're holding it here, it's pulling the back side towards you. And you might get uh, wrong tightening specifications, I imagine, from that. Yeah, I'm gonna throw these bolts in and then I'm gonna tighten them. I'm gonna do the patterns. So you can see the patterns here, you know, it goes your one, two, three, four, five, six, and all that. And then it says to loosen it, it says to tighten it, it says to loosen it, it says to tighten it. You keep doing it and it says SST here, which is a uh, figure using SST. SST is just the tool that it designates for that particular step, which it says in the beginning of the manual, but I, I bought one of those tools. I don't remember where I have it. I think it's in here. Yeah, I have one of them. Yeah, they're not that expensive. It's like maybe $20 if even that. So this is an angle gauge, I believe is what they call it. And it tells you what angle you're at and all that. So you'll set it to whatever angle you need to. And then you'll put this clip on something that's sturdy because this clip is connected to the gauge uh, reading itself. So if you hook this clip up to the right spot, you'll pin it so that way this won't rotate when you're spinning everything and then you need your lockout too. But yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I will be back. All right, so I finished tightening the bolts. So you do uh, all your torques and all that. Uh, you do like 12.5 foot pounds and then uh, turn by 60 degrees and all that stuff. And uh, I checked, I'm checking the rotation of this and it's, it feels very tight, but it, it almost kind of feels like it's getting looser the more that I rotate it. So I don't know if that's just um, the lube because it's so thick, the assembly oil. I'm not entirely sure if that is going to be an issue, but I'm just gonna see what happens, I guess. So next is the rear main seal. So the rear main seal goes on like this. So this open-ended cut goes inwards. And then all the dots face outward. And uh, what the manual says is to get this flush with this. So when you're hitting it in, and it says to not hammer it in um, kind of oblong. You wanna get it in even. And you can see there's a little lip in there too. So that should go around the, the crank itself. And then uh, it goes in like that. And it says to put oil on this. And then I'm probably just gonna see if I can push it in. I'm gonna try and muscle it in. And then uh, I guess I'll update with you uh, how it turns out. All right, that thing is a pain in the ass to get in unless you have, unless you have the tool. So there's a tool that goes over it and it just, it'll let you hit it completely square, even across everything. But uh, I didn't have the tool, and I, I underestimated how strong, or uh, I overestimated how strong my fingers were going to be. So what I did is I kind of like was pushing it in, and I was rotating the crankshaft at the same time, and I was just pushing in all around as it was rotating, and kind of rotating the, spinning the seal itself, and the crankshaft and all that, and then eventually I got it to slip in to where it was in just enough, and it was kind of like even on all sides, and then I just tapped it with a little mallet. You don't do like really hard, like thousand pound smacks. You do like very light taps and you keep going corner to corner and all that until eventually you get it flush. But I mean, it looks good. It looks like it's in there. I might have to adjust a little bit, but I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. Um, you want to check that this lip right here, that it's not curled either. So you can see the lip is not curled and it's sitting around it properly. So yeah, we're good there. Now I'm gonna slap this son of a bitch on this engine stand and yeah.